Hello and welcome to day 86 of our devotion. Let's have a moment of prayer, our reading, and then uh, our reading, our lesson for today. Most gracious God, we come before you, Lord God, just thanking you for another day. Thanking you, Lord God, for another wonderful opportunity to, Father, to come closer to you and to learn from you, Father. Father, we thank you that you go out of your way, Lord God, time and time again to keep us on the right path. That, Father, that ensures and, and reinforces and keeps us on a path that is pleasing unto you. Father, give us the ears to hear, your eyes to see, and your heart to receive what you have for us. And then, Father, by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, help us, God, to stay on that path. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1, through Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32. And then Luke chapter 6, verse 37 through chapter 7, verse 10. So our lesson today comes from the book of Psalms. So if you have time to do some extra reading, read Psalm 37, specifically 32 through 40. In that particular passage of the book of Psalm, uh, David talks about uh, those that that are rich. They, you know, they have the popularity, they have all the friends, they have all the money, they have the latest fashion, whatever fashionable item that has just came out, they have it. They have the latest phone, they have whatever has come out, they have it. They're the trendiest, they are, um, again, the most popular, they have it all together. They're doing well. The same things that you see as a teenager, sometimes adults would do the same thing. We look and we say, look at all these people that, you know, Lord, they don't even know you and, and they got money and houses and cars and they travel all over the world. And here I am, I can't even buy me a, a dinner at McDonald's, amen. And they can buy up the franchise, not have a problem with it. David offers us some encouragement for those type of people. The Bible says that those type of people when they are gone, they are gone. All of the movie stars and actresses that have had all the money and all these other things, once they are gone, they're gone. And not only are they gone from this earth, but they have no place in heaven with him. So they're, they're gone. They're absolutely gone. And no matter where you look for them, they are gone. But the individuals that live in Ryston, they always have a legacy. They always leave behind their children that will do the same things. They always leave behind a legacy. God makes sure that those that are living according to his ways, they always leave behind a legacy. Always. So, the lesson for, for us, according to the text that we're reading, is that we are not to get caught up in what the majority and the world, what they're doing. We're not to feel like I can't be popular until I do these things. And the, the, the danger of looking at other people, the danger of drifting, period, is that you never leaped as far as you think you have. I remember um, a, a preacher saying this uh, on TV. He says, playing with sin. Sin will always take you farther away than you wanted to go. And the effects will always last longer than what you thought they would last. Meaning that it only starts with a little bit of drifting. Just a little bit of drifting. So you're, you're hanging out with people at school and they're popular and, you know, you're not out there um, 
you're not pregnant, but you, you have a boyfriend. You're talking on the phone. Your friends or people that you know, they're, you know, they're pregnant. You're just talking on the phone with the boy. That's drifting. Because sooner you drift and one step will take will turn into two. And two steps will turn into a jump. And a jump will turn into a leap. And then before you know, you are miles and miles away from God. And you're doing whatever you want to do. And now you are on the road to destruction. Let's say that, you know, you're out not out there stealing or anything, but uh, maybe the music that you listen to is very suggestive of violence. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. But now you get into an argument and the first thing that comes up out of your mouth is what you've heard in the song. Now you're arguing, you argue with everybody. Now you know, the arguing, people don't, you know, they're not intimidated by your argument. Now you have to do something. So now you have, you got to fight. And now that you're fighting, there's someone that, that fights a little bit more than you. So now you have to do something more. I was, I'm remembering now there was um, a live story of a, not live story, but a, a documentary rather um, of Ben Carson. And I remember in the story where he talked about how he really did not want to, to fight, but he had to prove himself. And so not only did he fight, but he actually hit someone with a weapon and drew blood. And it's because of his praying mom, it's because of that incident of her prayers that he changed the path that he was going of being out there in the street of hanging out with, you know, with, with gay members. He changed his life and became the doctor that he is today. So Ben Carson didn't always, he wasn't always this, this good, clean kid. And, and he just naturally progressed to becoming a doctor. No, he was going down the wrong, wrong path, wrong, wrong path. And God turned it around and used him to do great things. He did great, great things as a doctor. Great. If you ever have the opportunity to watch his story, it is absolutely amazing. The things that God allowed him to do. And he gave God all the credit for what he has accomplished. So our prayer for today is that we don't flirt with sin. We don't flirt. We don't flirt with it in our actions. We don't flirt with it in our in our thoughts. We don't flirt with it in our deeds because sin will always take you farther away than what you intended to go, and the effects will always last longer than what you thought they would last. One time of being with the wrong crowd in a convenience store. It costs somebody their, their lives. I know that's not our portion, but I, I'm just giving you some real examples. They went out one time with a group of people that they really should not have been hanging out with. They went out there one time and they did not have their life. Their life was taken from them. They were with a boy one time. One time they had sex. One time. And they got pregnant. One time they used drugs and now they're addicted. There is a new drug now. I was, I was, I was reading one time and it said the drug is so potent one time it'll cost you your life. There's an, ex uh, an example that's coming to my mind now of a, of a young girl. Um, it was on, I believe 2020 or one of these, Dateline or one of these after hours news show. And it was showing that this child one time in high school at a party took this, this drug one time, one time for her. It may have been a million for everybody else at that party, but for her it was one time and she's dead. So don't get caught up in looking at 
the prosperity of those people that are doing all the wrong things. They have already made their decision and God already has a plan that, that, ha that he, they have been ex they have ex themselves from. And unless they repent, their portion is not good. But for the child of God, for the children of God, we are begged not to follow that path. Because we have been told many, many times before that the path that we follow is narrow. But we all know that it leads to everlasting life. And the path that is broad where everybody is traveling, it leads to destruction. Even with the illustration that we have seen again about that broad, that, that broad and wide path, many people can travel that path at the same time. That's why it's wide. I could have, it, it could be a group of, group of girls, group of young men, a group of people traveling the path at the same time but it leads to destruction. And that narrow path, only one can pass at a time. It keeps you safe. Even think about the roads that, we, that, that your parents are driving on. You got one lane, and that one lane, one car, has to travel at one time. And if you stay in your lane, you're safe. If you obey those, those signs, those traffic signs, the word of God, you're safe. But the minute you cross over to another lane, you, as an accident, the minute you don't obey those stop signs and red lights, it's trouble. It's the same thing in life. Stay in your lane and obey the words of the Lord. Amen. Praise the living God. Most gracious Father, we come before you thanking you, Lord God, for our handbook of instructions for us to obey. We thank you, God, that you've given us a lane for us to be in. You've given us, Lord God, a lane of where you have blessings that will take care and keep us safe. Father, we thank you for providing us with our own lane. Father, help us, give us the grace not to veer off into another lane and not to flirt with sin. Father, give us the grace to be obedient to your word and to follow the ways of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you guys. See you next time.